and collaboration the yeah, Korea Institute of Material Science. So without further ado, to share with us on processing of natural fiber composts, help me join me in giving a round of applause to Dr. Byung Sun Kim. Well, good, uh, hello again and good afternoon. Uh, my topic is processing of uh, natural fiber composites. Uh, as, as is well known, the composite is composed of matrix and uh, reinforcements. Reinforcements are composed of various fibers, including natural fibers. Matrix, you can have all kinds, including uh, well, if I divide them into two areas, one is thermoplastic, the other may be thermoset. And uh, depending on how you process them, you can have a good composite with these two in combination. Well, this is the same type of uh, natural fibers that Marisa talked about. And uh, luckily, the advantage of the natural fibers are that uh, they are mechanically relatively strong, strong enough, environmentally free, economical, many applications, and they have plenty around us. So you can, we can make good use of these materials. But uh, not only that they are very good, but they also have problems such as, these are four large problems we can come up with. Audition problems, insufficient interfacial strength, quality-wise irregularity, because uh, sometimes you have good harvesting, sometimes you don't. So depending on where, where, when. So we, so they design. So since the mechanical properties are irregular, whenever we are designing using computer, uh, we have to over-design. Usually, we use the weakest material properties. So we end up with over-design. That's usually the problem. And stability, we, uh, weak thermal stability of natural fiber. They burn very easily. So uh, best is to uh, use fire retardant matrix system such that they don't burn as easily. And the other is a moisture problem. They are very hydrophilic. They absorb moisture quite well. So we treat the fibers uh, such that they don't absorb as much, which uh, Marissa already talked about. Uh, so we usually have uh, surface treatment problems. Well, in uh, we can treat the fibers with so this type of surface treatment, silan plasma coupling agent or compact cableizer. And in the process technologies, we have extrusion, uh, injection, map composite, and I'll be showing you some others as well, filament winding, RTM as well. However, all of that, you end up with expensive device, additional steps, more time, organic solvents, cost up, short fiber reinforcements. However, we cannot solve all of them, but we are trying to solve some of the, those uh, typical problems occurring, what we have in, uh, with natural fiber composite. As for the process, process technologies, we have, there are several, such as extrusion and the injection technology, which are very well known. RTM, resin transfer molding technology, we, which we have talked about this morning and this afternoon. Press molding technology, and the other may be filament winding technology. And uh, well, if you have short fiber or particles or the powder of uh, wood or sawdust or very short wood fibers, we use them to produce pellets. So this is uh, one of those uh, twin screw extruder from which we can produce pellets. Then we use those pellets and just uh, press mold, or we can use a uh, same press applied vacuum to strengthen the, the materials. That's one way to fabricate. And the other is um, we use online polypropylene fibers and natural fibers, and uh, we let it go through carding process such that they are lined up. And then uh, you line them up and also stack them up 
and feed, feed uh, those materials into uh, the feeder. Then winding and trimming, we end up with a preform looking like this that contains the fibers, the polypropylene fibers as well as the natural fibers. Then all we have to do is just apply hot press so we come up with a plate, very simple. And the other is RTM technology, which uh, Marisa talked about, so I'm not gonna go into details. Uh, first, well, first you put this preform, put them into a mold, inject resin, apply heat, and then release, then you come with a part. And RTM technology is usually used for parts that is about one to two meters long. It could re replace or uh, process technology known as autoclave. This autoclave is, is, the, uh, is a chamber <coughs> from which you can apply pressure, heat, and vacuum all at the same time and very expensive. If you are talking about autoclave of the size of this room, you are talking about, about $200,000, very expensive. So uh, this process can replace uh, this autoclave uh, processing. And for larger uh, parts, we could use a variation of RTM, which is vacuum assisted resin injection, scrimp resin injection process, resin film injection process. And as an example, we have used our PARTM process to develop flat support fairing for Boeing 737. And uh, this length is a little bit over two meters. First, we'll uh, do a film, film, we'll uh, stack film materials. On top of film materials, we'll put polypropylene. Then we put the bagging film on top of it. Uh, then we'll do resin injection into it. Then we come up with a part looking like this. Uh, this is about uh, 2.1 meter in length and maybe one millimeter in thickness. And uh, Marisa can lift it with one finger. Yes, he said it. And these are other applications with the uh, RTM technology. Uh, Boeing 737 take on rear door of armored vehicle, three dimensional beam uh, from here to there is about 40. One, two, about 40 centimeters, and transformer support, uh, which supports the transformer along the highway speed train railroad. And you can also, we can also come with the hood, we can also fabricate the top and the bottom at the same time, just put, uh, bond both parts together. Windmill blade, of course. For example, this is a three megawatt blade and here to here is uh, only 44 meters. Weighs only 10 tons. And we could also apply to monorail development. Uh, as for the filament winding process, um, the process is the, in that process, continuous resin wet fibers are wound around string mandrel and cured. And the best process for symmetric structures. But the problem is we have to have continuous fibers. So the natural fibers, they are not seamless. So we need uh, those uh, rings, knotting them together so we have continuous fibers. So the continuous fibers like this, they are dipped into resin bath and then wound around this mandrel, making the symmetric part. And uh, some of the examples may be the rest of that. So you can make some tubes, long tubes like that, and they are so light, 
means I'm made of the glass fibers. They're so light you can carry, two persons you can carry it up to the mountain. Small, uh, mid-sized airplanes you can make with body structures. And uh, this is the um, gasoline storage tanks. Uh, their length may be a little bit longer than the width of this room and made of glass fibers. And this is a compressed natural gas a fuel tank for automobiles. We developed it 10 plus years ago. And this is another spherical, near spherical vessel, uh, carbon fiber, of course, and um, that is used to launch Korea satellite a few years ago. Actually, this was a prototype, and my colleague took the same technology and went out to form a company and supplied it to a company. He's also my son. Who is it there? <laughs> anyway, um, this is composed of uh, glass fibers, and I think with natural fibers, you can replace this tube or this light pole, as well as this, these tanks, not these three. But these three, we can re uh, replace with natural fiber composite. And the uh, WPC here uh, is a wood powder polypropylene composite. So you can use just short, either short fibers or wood, pop, wood powders, sawdust. And there, you can use them as an interior of automotive plastic lumber, window, door, roofing, sliding, siding, foundation, bridge, pier decking, etc. And they are very useful and they can replace all, just about all wood products. And uh, those roofing, they, this is a WPC product, the roofing, that area, so the, the floor here, and the panels here, roof, and other blocks, and the housing materials as well. Especially those materials, if they, if you are applying in a mountain area or near sea areas, you will have a lot of insects. They cannot attack this uh, plastic wood, <laughs> probably cheaper, because uh, plastic wood, at the beginning, you can have a certain color. But if you use wood, uh, time to time, you have to paint it. But this one, you don't need to paint. So it's, uh, you know, long run, it's much cheaper. Well, I try to make it short. Thank you very much. Thank you.